Kozlowski over William Byron, Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, and Kyle Larson. Top seven or eight back to single file forma formation. Jordan Hamlin to the outside, Chris Busher to the inside. That's the battle for the 10 spot. They will race wheel to wheel now. Hamlin has the better run for the top of turn number two. That'll surge him forward. He will bypass Busher in the outside lane. And now dive for the bottom does Denny Hamlin, trying to gain another position. Can't do it, falls back in line. Hamlin, for the moment, will ride right along behind Chris Busher. Busher's got an inside lane on Denny Hamlin. He'll slide up across the nose of Hamlin's FedEx Toyota. Denny under attack one more time. Here comes Kevin Harvick to the inside. Harvick using the apron off, too, to hook that car, turn it off the corner. Not going to pay dividends for him. Matter of fact, Harvick will follow Hamlin back to the corner behind him by one car length. Off turn number four, top three, nose to tail. Kozlowski, Byron, Kurt Busch, and how about that guy running in the four spot that seven time, Jimmy Johnson. Really needs to turn things around tonight. No better way to do it than with a win in the Bojangles Southern 500. Johnson very comfortable right now in that number four spot. He rides along in fourth and behind him Running in the fifth position is Kyle Larson. Larson took a look down to his inside. Couldn't make it happen at the entrance of turn three. Wow, coming up off of the corner, everybody trying to find grip here at Darlington Raceway in the early going. Brad Keselowski leads. William Byron still right there in his tire tracks with Kurt Busch. Nobody looking to do anything crazy right now. Just try to put a little rubber down on this racetrack, get a grip on the racing surface. Single file right now, back to the top 15 or 18 spot. Battle was for the fifth position. You had Kyle Larson make that Chase Elliott going after Larson. Instead, Elliott slipped off two, and that allows Ryan Blaney to punch a hole to the inside. And boy, right now, they are just grinding that throttle. They're just, the track is so rough on tires right now, it's unreal. I'm looking at the lap times. In the last three laps, they fell off a half a second a lap, and that is a ton of time to fall off with tire wear. But you can tell they're not taking it easy. They're running it hard, but they are giving that turn three and four wall a little bit of a break. Brad Keselowski leading this race with William Byron right behind him. And, boy, Byron almost passed him off at of turn four that last time. Bye, guys. And it'll be lap number six as they come off turn number four. Brad over William Byron. Kurt Busch right there. Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Larson. They go nose to tail back to one. Byron continuing to keep a little bit of pressure on the back bumper of the Brad Keselowski machine. A little further back, Joey Logano. He's going to take a peek to the inside of Daniel Suarez. Nothing there as they race to the back stretch. That is the battle for the eighth position. Suarez in eighth. Logano in ninth. Logano started that run to the end. Side, had to back away. Couldn't find enough real estate to get that job done. Now, Logano under pressure from Kevin Harvick. Harvick will take a peek to the inside, and ironically, the paint scheme Joey Logano is running a throwback to Kevin Harvick when he ran that paint scheme. Harvick still right there. Just a couple of car lengths off the back bumper of the Logano machine. Joey, in turn, still keeping some pressure on Daniel Suarez. He looks low, but there's nothing happening off turn two. Yeah, right now, Logano's going to follow Suarez off the corner. It's like he's trying to set up a pass about the time he'll get a run. Suarez will get a better one. Speaking of runs, battle for seconds off four. And that is William Byron and Kurt Busch coming across the line. Kurt diving down to the inside of William Byron. Try to complete the pass before they enter turn one. He gets it done. Slides up across the nose of William Byron. Move Kurt Busch to the number two position. Got four Chevrolets lined up right behind the race leading Ford of Brad Keselowski. You got Kurt Busch, you got William Byron, Jimmy Johnson, and Kyle Larson. They are the top five. Kyle Larson in that number five position further back they're getting after it racing hard with Joey Logano and Daniel Suarez that battle continues to heat up that is for positions eight and nine headed to turn one Suarez has just been pestering Joey Logano he gets within about a half a car length takes a peek to the inside can't quite find the grip now he's fallen back into the clutches of Kevin Harvick Harvick looks down low a couple of teammates racing for the ninth position now Harvick booked low off two he couldn't get it done on the back straight away but at the entrance to three here Here's Harvick down to the inside trying to grab the spot. Well, that car is just so good running on the bottom of the racetrack when everybody else needs to and wants to run right up against the outside safer barrier. But no surprise to see Harvick running at the bottom of the racetrack. He likes to do that here at Darlington, although nobody else will. Yeah, nobody else will, but he seems to get on the bottom of turn three and four and find some grip down there. And he's the type of driver just does not want to get up there and flirt around with the wall in three and four and risk anything right now. But just about the time you say he's going to be a runner on the bottom all night long and then he'll go to the top maybe later, he doesn't. He seems to stay down low most of the race. That's his comfort zone. 
I think about this track, and there's another track like it, Atlanta Motor Speedway, that tears tires up pretty hard, grinds them down. That's another track that Kevin runs right on the bottom. He's won many races there. He's kind of got this place figured out. So let's just watch him throughout the night and see what his trend is. We'll keep a close eye on Kevin Harvick. He continues to ride quite well in the number nine position, although with 12 laps complete, Brad Keselowski, the defending champion of the Bojangles Southern 500, picking up where he left off. He shows the way. Dealing with car problems? At AutoZone, we've got the free services you need to help you get back on the road. Like our AutoZone Rewards Program. Members get a $20 reward every time they spend $20 or more five times. And if you're looking to reward your engine, start with regular oil changes. They help protect and lubricate your engine parts and keep it running smooth. Visit us at AutoZone.com and start the job fast with free same-day store pickup and free next-day delivery. See terms at AutoZone.com slash rewards. Restrictions apply. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Let's consider the secret life of the innermost nesting doll. Living most of her life in the dark inside the other nesting dolls, she has plenty of time to think, if she could. Sadly, she has no brain. However, when an innermost nesting doll hears that Geico not only saves people money, but also has been providing great service for over 75 years, she thinks it's obvious you should switch. Because yes, switching to Geico is a no-brainer. Pity the innermost nesting doll and her lot in life. We are live on the Motor Racing Network, the Bojangles Southern 500, just going green. As a matter of fact, at 10.08 Eastern Time, the green flag went in the air, 14 laps in. Now, this is a 367-lap race. Stage one will end at lap number 100, stage two at lap number 200. Brad Keselowski showing the way, Kurt Busch is second, William Byron in third, Jimmy Johnson fourth, and Kyle Larson rounds out the top five. From Darlington Raceway, this is the Motor Racing Network, the voice of NASCAR. Wings Nation with Steve Post, Aaron Evernham, and Ashley Stremme. Your destination for all things winged sprint cars. Each Saturday at 8.30 and 11.30 a.m. on MAV-TV. Live at noon on WingsNation.com and Facebook Live. Join us for in-depth conversations with drivers and personalities that make up the greatest dirt racing on earth. The Winged Nation Preview Podcast each Thursday previews the upcoming weekend. Winged Nation, winged sprint car talk covering dirt tracks all across America. MRN's Classic Races. Labonte gets crossed up. Labonte goes around. Dale Earnhardt now watches Labonte spun across the line and got the win. Spanning 50 years of NASCAR racing. Barney Paul. There's a beautiful afternoon here in Daytona Beach. And the action will be fast and furious. Legendary voices. Legendary races. Daryl Simply, what happened? I just hope he chokes on that 200000 That's all I can tell you. MRN's Classic Races. Available on MRN.com, iTunes, and your favorite podcast providers. He did, he did touch. No, he knocked the hell out of me. Back at Darlington Raceway, no change at the front of the field. Brad Keselowski continues to show the way. Kurt Busch is not letting Brad get away, however. The gap back to him, only about a car length, maybe a half a car length. The battles for the lead in turn number one. Just keeping the pressure on is Kurt Busch, trying to hound Brad Keselowski into a bit of a mistake behind them. Pretty hot battle for third, William Byron and Jimmy Johnson. Watching the battle for the lead, Brad Keselowski looks in the rearview mirror. Kurt Busch has arrived on the scene. Brad will take the car to the bottom of the racetrack. Kurt going to try to take it away topside. Yeah, but he can't do it right now. Keselowski still got the lead. Now all of a sudden, a one car, Kurt Busch, inside the bad car, the number two car, Keselowski, into turn one. He takes the lead right now in the Southern 500. Kurt Busch around inside of Brad Keselowski. Now we'll have to make a move and drive underneath the lap machine of J.J. Yaley. Kurt Busch to the point here at Darlington on lap 19. Busch slides to the bottom. He will put Yaley in the rearview mirror, and Brad Keselowski will do the same. 19 laps complete. Make it 20 this time by with a new race leader, Kurt Busch, in the Chevrolet. Getting by Brad just a lap ago. So it's Kurt, then Brad, William Byron. Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Larson, one name we have yet to talk about all night, but we have to and remind you exactly why we have not yet, but will be soon. Kyle Busch, he is now up to 16th. Alex Hayden, he started 
shotgun on the field. Yep, had an engine change, but Steve Post, that's not the entire story. No, during qualifying yesterday afternoon, the car would not accelerate, and, Kerr, and Kyle said he felt like the engine was failing. Well, Adam Stevens and the crew started the diagnosis and uh, diagnosed the race car, and they found out that the engine was just fine. Well, what was the gremlin? They don't know but they changed everything that is a moving part or piece on that race car. They changed the electronic system, the ECU system. They changed the engine in the car, the drive line, the rear end. Kyle even told us they changed the brakes on the race car just to make sure that they fixed it. And Adam Stevens told me, fingers crossed, the car's gonna run well. It's running well. He's up to the 16th spot starting last. The one thing they knew going for him is the car was really, really good Friday in practice. So they feel good about the handling of the car and thus far, they feel like that engine bugaboo may be out the window. Kyle Busch is rocketing through this field. Let's follow him now as he makes his way back to turn number one. Dave Moody, Kyle Busch is there in one. He's really got a good race car right now. Adam Stevens can uncross his fingers for sure. He's just been surging forward. And Mike Bagley, next victim, Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon directly ahead of Kyle Busch. Kyle will take a peek out of line. Trying to get a run to the inside. Austin chooses the inside entry to three, which leaves the outside line wide open for Kyle in four. Kyle Busch making some hay on the outside. Watched him a couple of laps ago work in the middle of the racetrack. Kyle Busch finding any piece of real estate Dave possible to get his way back to the leaderboard. Well, we know Kyle, and he's never been renowned for patience, especially when making his way from the tail end of the field. Not that he spends a whole lot of time there on average, but Kyle Busch right now is just slicing his way through this field. He's got 12 laps before the competition. Gosh, he doesn't want to burn the thing to the ground just yet, but he is making up a lot of progress. Kyle Busch, so another good stop for the Kyle Busch car. Others on this in a pit road, Ryan Blaney, Ryan Newman, Joy Logano, William Byron, Eric Jones, Clint Boyer, and Brad Keselowski. The leader was in front of Steve Post. That leader was Kurt Busch. He's in pit box 15. It was no changes, no adjustment to that Chevrolet. A really good race car. Pit box 16 is brother Kyle Busch. Minor adjustment on air pressure, I believe, on that one as he was complaining a little lack of grip. Denny Hamlin, they're still working on the race car. He described turns one and two as terrible. So hopefully they made some adjustments on the FedEx Toyota. Chad Johnston and the 42 team ripping off a great stop down there. They had the Xfinity fastest pit stop getting Kyle Larson out number one in front of Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson and Chase Elliott. Get the speed coverage and control you need with Xfinity x Xfinity official partner of NASCAR. We all have missions, like mission late night tacos at the taco truck that only takes cash. But is so worth getting cash for. Whatever your mission, trust e-checking from Navy Federal Credit Union with ATM rebates, no monthly fees, and unlimited taco potential. Another round? Mm-hmm. The free account with perks for members. See if you can join today. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. ATM fee rebates up to $10 per statement period, insured by NCUA. Check out MRN.com for a podcast series called The Tough Trucks of NASCAR. 25 years and still trucking. We'll take you back to some great races. Here they come. They're crashing in the back at the line. Mike Skinner wins it. Some wild moments. Brendan Gaughan gets turned around and slams hard into the inside retaining wall. And the stories that go with them. We lost the championship, but there was a lot of ugly things that went on behind the scenes. Ended a lot of friendships, actually, to this day. Download the shows for free on iTunes and at MRN.com. Coming to one to go next time by the field, working uh, towards turn number three right now with Kyle Larson at the front of the field. From Darlington Raceway, this is the Motor Racing Network, the voice of NASCAR. When you're on the go, missing the side-by-side -side action at the racetrack isn't a problem. Here comes Logano on the high side. He drives it deep into turn number two. Motor Racing Network brings the NASCAR race to you, wherever you are so you don't miss one lap of the excitement. Denny Hamlin has won the 61st edition of the Daytona 500. Yeah. You are the man, D.H. The power of radio to the imagination of the listener. Tune in to the Motor Racing Network. Visit MRN.com for an affiliate list in your local area. When the racing concludes each weekend, Keep up with the non-stop NASCAR news each weekday on NASCAR Today Midday. The drafting type races I've always excelled in, so that's where I see uh, a tremendous advantage. I think it was very important for us to get Martin and to get Cole, um, both of those as a, as a group, because they're very good at what they do. 
NASCAR Today Midday, Monday through Friday on the Motor Racing Network, the voice of NASCAR. MRN Radio's live coverage of the Bojangles Southern 500 from Darlington is brought to you in part by Xfinity. Get the speed you need with Xfinity, official partner of NASCAR. By Bloomin' Mondays at Outback Steakhouse. By Freightliner Trucks. And by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. A few moments ago was Kyle Larson with the fastest pit stop. His team turned a 12.5 pit stop. Get the speed coverage and control you need with Xfinity x Xfinity, the official partner of NASCAR. Field coming up off of turn number four. They'll approach the Geico restart zone and will resume the 70th running of the Bojangles Southern 500. Kyle Larson, he's the race leader. He'll opt to restart on the outside lane. Green flag in the air. He'll get away by a car length, but Kyle Busch has given big brother Curtis shove to turn one. And Kyle Larson slides down the, down the banking to put a stop to that. He'll take the lead. Kurt in line second. Battle for third. Kyle Busch to the inside. Jimmy Johnson up high. Chip Ganassi racing one and two in Kyle Larson and Kurt Busch. Third, Jimmy Johnson. Fourth, Kyle Busch. Further back, they fanned out three and four wide. Now they will funnel back to double wide formation. Here they come again, back off turn number four, and they were three wide there for a moment. Chase Elliott all the way down on the bottom. Right there behind Chase Elliott again, Dave. They're three wide. They are. They, they get it sorted out, though. Elliott goes all the way to the wall. Joey Logano a groove lower. Paul Menard bailed out of that bottom lane to get it back to two abreast formation. We're talking about a battle from seventh on back. Elliott, Logano, and also Menard. You got Eric Jones in that mix. Everybody's scratching and clawing for every piece of real estate they can get. While they can do that with the fresh Goodyear tires after that pit stop, trying to find the positions they need, it's good racing from fifth on back. Fifth place is where the action is. Brad Keselowski has got it. Denny Hamlin wants it. He looks to the inside off too, but Brad actually pulls away by half a car length. Ford and Toyota battle races up the back straight away. Now in single file formation. Just watching Denny Hamlin and company trying to make some moves off the corner. We'll sort it out now with Hamlin going to the high side. Lap 109, Kyle Larson showing the way over his teammate Kurt Busch, then Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, and Brad Keselowski. That's your top five. The lead is beginning to tighten up. It takes Kurt Busch's car about five or six laps to fully come in. He's beginning to close in on Larson. Kyle Busch keeping the heat on Jimmy Johnson. Battle for the lead and the battle for third comes off the end of the back straightaway right now. Jimmy Johnson in the battle for third looks back. Kyle Busch going all the way to the high country, all four. Can't find the room he needs to get by Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy will keep position number three, if only for a moment, but here comes Kyle Busch back to the bottom. Ducks to the inside of the racetrack, drives it deep down to the inside, slides all the way up to the door of Jimmy Johnson. They're side by side off two. Move Kyle Busch to the number three spot. Kyle will grab that position. Johnson falls back to fourth, and with all that shuffling going on, it's allowed Brad Keselowski to close in in fifth. Kyle and Brad go top side. Jimmy keeps his car on the bottom of the racetrack. Chipping away lap after lap after lap. That's the way you could sum it up for Kyle Busch, who is now third in front of Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski. He made dramatic progress early coming out of the back of the field. Obviously, the closer you get to the front, the tougher those passes become, but he's all the way to the three spot, Mike, and he's digging for more. Yeah, he is digging definitely for some more. It's been a long night in the early going for Kyle Busch. We've still got a long way to go here in Darlington, but right now they are making lots of progress, and it seems like that Kyle Busch car is getting faster each lap. And Mike, talking about Kyle Busch, we're just talking up here in the booth. Every single pit stop they've had so far tonight for Kyle Busch, they've picked up positions. One time they picked up six positions. This last pit stop, they picked up one position. But the bottom line, every time they're picking something up. And now he started way in the back in this race. He's all the way up to third. His lap times look fantastic. So it's kind of like. Crew continues to work on the damage. Corey LaJoy is down and away, but uh, potential scary moment down here. Everyone is all right. Nobody got hit by anything because they were lightning quick getting back over pit wall. But uh, heavy contact down here between Corey LaJoy and Denny Hamlin. Where things were going so good for Denny Hamlin. Then he was involved in the accident. Now he's involved with an altercation down here on pit road. We'll recap everything for you 
when we come back. With 88 laps left to go from Darlington Raceway, this is the Motor Racing Network, the voice of NASCAR. Victory Junction was young race driver Adam Petty's dream. He worked toward building a camp where children with serious medical conditions could concentrate on fun and not their illness or disease. When he died tragically, his family and friends around NASCAR made sure that dream came true. Today, Victory Junction is a camp that provides fun, life-changing experiences to children dealing with illnesses and disabilities, all at no cost to the camper. Help us serve more children by visiting victoryjunction.org. Hey guys, it's Dylan Welch. He's Tyler Burnett. We're the co-hosts of the Rip the Fence podcast. If you like traditional non-wing dirt track racing, we've got the podcast for you. Shane Meal trying to drive away. I can't do everything, but I could do anything and everything I wanted before I got injured. So, Just like many of the great podcasts going, we invite racers in to talk and they tell us their life story. And it's how I feel that matters. It's the Rip the Fence podcast available on MRN.com and your favorite podcast app. Field right now working down the back straight away, coming to the Geico restart zone here in a moment, then back under the green flag with 87 laps to go. And it's Chip Ganassi, Chevrolet out front, Kyle Larson behind the wheel with Eric Jones getting ready to start to his outside. Kyle Busch will restart in position number three. Alex Bowman fourth and Brad Keselowski fifth. They've waved off the start so the lights come back on top of the pace car so we'll go at least one more as we look down at the flag stand yep Joey Acock on top of the flag stand furls it up and will give us the signal one to go one more time this time by hey folks next weekend the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series heads to Indianapolis for the regular season finale the big machine vodka 400 at the Brickyard will set the field for the 2019 playoffs you won't want to miss the last race of the regular season plus Saturday's Indiana 250 Xfinity Series race. All as well as concerts from Florida Georgia Line, Nelly, Dan and Shay, and Mitchell Tenpenny. Visit NASCAR.com slash tickets today. So, a lot going on here, Rusty Wallace, with the big crash over there in turn number four, some contenders getting damaged, some pit stops now. With the, the field's been shuffled up just a yeah, bit. Yeah, it really has. We've been talking a lot about one car, Jimmy Johnson, because he's been out of the chase, needs to have a good race to get back in. He tore that left front corner up in that 48. I don't know how good that car is going to be now throughout the rest of the night. We've got to take a look at Kurt Busch's car, the Chip Ganassi car, to see what kind of condition it is It is in. But the one team that he does have, the 42 car, Kyle Larson, that baby's tuned up real good right now, and it's up front leading this race. And he's been in the top three or four all night long. So that particular car is really strong, and we can't forget about Kyle Busch, how strong he's been all night long. Tell you what, under 100 laps to go, this is going to be a shootout. It really is. Pace car gets behind the wall. Field continues to work through turn number four. They'll make their way back to the Geico restart zone, and we look for the green flag to get the Bojangles Southern 500 back underway. 280 laps of 367 are complete. Green flag in the air, and we're racing yet again. On the break from the outside lane, it's Kyle Larson. He tries to get away from Eric Jones. He'll be able to cross down across the nose of Eric Jones. Ooh, a little contact there. As Jones roots his way back to the bottom, he'll bypass Larson and take the lead as they exit to the back stretch. Eric Jones will slide across the nose of Larson. Here's Larson back to the bottom, side by side, off the end of the back straightaway. Kyle Larson back to the lead, but here comes Jones back to the top of the racetrack. Exiting turn number four, back to the start finish line. It's going to be Larson. Now Eric Jones opens up the inside lane. They touch again. Back and forth they go. Full contact racing here at Darlington. Eric Jones back to the lead. 